Thank you, Tom. Uh, well, this concludes our chat for today. Thank you, Tom, and everyone who contributed to it. So well, officially, we actually got to the end of the questions. That's well, a very rare event. Well, no, not not exactly. Um, <laughs> that that's the end of the official questions. Ah, good. <laughs> now okay. we're going to go unofficial. Okay. So Ingeborg has another more detailed Great. thing that's probably not going to be so uh, appropriate for maybe a bigger audience. So she has the detailed question that she originally some details about the question she originally submitted. And then I've got something I would like to propose based on Oliver's question on, on his friend or a friend with Tourette syndrome on something we might be able to do here. So stay tuned, folks. <laughs> <laughs> so Ink Inkboard, go ahead. Yes. Uh, yes, of course I understand that you don't want to go into the, the details, uh, if, uh, even if uh, uh, they are strange details in the public. Of course, I understand this. But, you know, in this case, what uh, the stream I, I wrote, hmm, uh, you know, the details, you know, the name of the entity and what she gave me, what he gave me, you know, this is the most intriguing thing, of course. It, I, I think it's always these details are the most intriguing uh, things for everybody. And uh, this is also what I would be very interested just to hear uh, how common this is and, uh, you know, whether uh, or, or many people uh, have encounters like this and situations like this. This would be very important for me to know. And the, the other thing is, I think uh, I better just read my text. Uh, Donna, should I read my text fully? Okay. Yes. Sure. So, so I wrote, uh, last weekend I participated in a highly professional workshop where we tried active imagination according to Carl Gustav Jung. Uh, I didn't know about the, this technique before. We did it not alone but in a group of about 14 and shared our imaginations. The results were really striking and showed quite bluntly all respective mental patterns and how our respective subjective realities, ego, ego tunnels, differed. For me personally, as a result of using this technique that I had never used before, in a dream on October 1st after the workshop, two days, three days after the workshop, I managed to see a multidimensional being that introduced himself to me as uni Universus. He said, I am Universus. Oder zu mir, ich bin Universus. In a class of about 10 people, after some instruction on how to understand the sun correctly, a, show, a sort of field potential in gestalt of an aircraft landed in front of my feet. Uh, it, it is my partner now. I know this is, it is my partner. We both, the field potential, I mean the aircraft and I decided to choose the name uh, of it uh, uh, and we call it, it wants to be called Namaste. In future it will, by mul it will, it will be my multidimensional craft. It is empathic and able of shape-shifting according to my personal state and needs. Now, I don't have any idea about the process to build and develop Namaste further. Do you have any advice you can share with me? Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, do other people experience this is one question. And yes, lots of other people experience something that's similar. Now, they wouldn't have necessarily the same metaphors. The metaphors are your own. That's what you bring to it. In other words, the aircraft. That's your that's your metaphor. Probably a metaphor for something that you that enables you to go and travel and go places, see things, you know, to, to reach out and go go beyond the limits of, of just yourself. So an aircraft in your mind is as a metaphor for something that will help you reach out, go beyond, go other places get other information. So that's your metaphor and others may have totally different kinds of metaphors, but they mean a similar sort of thing. 
-hmm. So our, our mind, in order to do things, we need process. We need physical process. It's just the way we are because as avatars here, everything in, under this rule set happens by physical process. You know, it's called causality. You know, everything has to happen because of a cause. Mm -hmm. So when you are in the larger consciousness system, in the non-physical, you need a process in order to accomplish things. So you have a metaphor of an airplane, and that's going to stand for the process that you need to go out and inter, you know, and connect and interact with other things in the non-physical. Because without the process, you wouldn't know how to do it because it seems unnatural to just connect without any process. So that's what your your airplane's for. It's going to be your metaphor for going places, for connecting in other other places with other entities. This entity that you experienced, who was universal, at least I'm translate translating that name to mean universal. Is that is that uh, a good Absolutely. translation? I tried. It, it, it's a Latin word. I tried typing. Okay. Yes. Universus. Mm -hmm. um, well, in any case, that sort of an entity, which is a, a very a very uh, knowledgeable entity, some some entity that has a um, a very large purview, can be helpful. Kind of a uh, um, perhaps may even become a mentor of mm -hmm. sorts for you. And that is your your um, metaphor for this mentoring function. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the system does have a mentoring function because your success is its success. As you grow up, it grows up. As you lower entropy, its entropy is lowered because you're a part of it. Mm -hmm. So it wants to have a mentoring uh, process with you. And this uh, universus then is a is a being. We call it a being because we interact with it. You know, we exchange information. It talks to us, if you will. We communicate, and that means it's a being. So that's another metaphor. We turn that into a being. It's really part of a part of the function of the larger consciousness system to be a mentor for you, and it's part of your nature to need a uh, a tool to to do that, which is your your aircraft. So this sort of thing happens to many people, and uh, that's because the system is set up to help everybody who's ready to be helped. Unfortunately, the number of people who are ready for this kind of help and can, can get advantage from it is a small number of the population. So if you talk to 10 other people, probably none of them will have had a similar experience. So you think it's very individual. But yet, if you talk to a thousand people, you'd probably find that uh, you'd run into you know, 20 or 30 of them or something that would have had very similar experiences. So it's not that uh, unusual. But it is going to be your own personal interface, and it's going to take you places and connect you with things and show you things that are just basically yours, things that are, that are uh, things that you can learn from, that you can make sense from. So it's a, it is a personal interface. It's not just that you're plugged into something that you know is, is a machine that works the same way for everybody. It's very much custom fit to your own needs, your own experiences, and your own, uh, you know, your own experience base. Mm -hmm. So yes, that's, it's a good thing to have happen. And I think now we've, we've talked now a couple of times you were you were at the last uh, of these fireside uh, chats, mm -hmm. and uh, I think you're in a you're kind of enrolled in a program, if you will. You and the larger consciousness system have created a, a relationship, a personal relationship, where where now you and it are going to to work together for you know to help you to give you the opportunity to make choices to grow up, and it works on two levels. One level is that just by doing it, just by having the dream, just by going to this Jungian uh, class and having that experience, 
you're growing up just by having the experiences. Yes. Okay, so yes. that's one thing. You have you're having these experiences. You're open to them, and mm -hmm. you're going to grow just by doing them. And it's going to be the same when you get in this airplane. When you and your airplane go places together, you're going to learn from that no matter what happens. So the value of it isn't necessarily on the information you're going to gather, though that seems to be that way. Oh, I'm going to go, you know, learn and, and see other things. But just the fact of doing it, of exercising these abilities is very educational. You'll learn a lot from the, just the context itself as opposed to the, the content. And you will learn some from the content but probably more from the context. So just, you know, my, my advice would be is to go with it, to explore it, yeah. um, you know, get in that airplane and go wherever it takes you, because mm -hmm. if you let it, it'll take you to where it is you need to go. You know, it will know where to go mm -hmm. and, uh, and interact with uh, universes uh, often. And you just think of that being and that being who, you know, talk to you and, and told you what what it did and just think of that being. And then when you think of it, you know, ask a question. Think of that being with a, with a question in mind and you will get an answer. You will have a and you will have an interaction with that being and it will be there pretty much whenever you want to talk to it. So that's what's neat about these interfaces, you know, and it's not that there is this being named Universus, who's sitting on a cloud someplace in, in uh, inner space, just waiting for you to ring up, you know, so it can talk to you. It's your interface to the larger consciousness system. Think of it that way. And it's always available to you at, uh, at all, you know, all the time. You just have to think of it. And it's, it's, a, it's an available interface. So that's, that is a, um, probably the most productive way to think of it. Now you can talk to Universus and he may tell you or she may tell you some of the of about you know what they do and so on, but most of that won't really amount to anything because that's just filler. It's basically an interface to the larger consciousness system. And uh, as much as we try to make it a specific being like we're talking to our next door neighbor or something like that, that generally just doesn't go too far because it tends to be filler to fill in your metaphors. Mm -hmm. uh, interact with it as a as a as a um, interface to the larger consciousness system, and then everything will work more smoothly. You won't, uh, you know, you'll get into fewer fewer problems with that approach than if you approach it as a as a uh, a being that's much like us but lives and works in a different place and at a different level. You know, rather think of as an interface and uh, interface that's available to you really anytime you want to make that, that interface. Now, if you make that interface frivolously, then that will be less true. If you make that interface, you know, uh, uh, seriously, because you want to learn and you want to grow, which is, I, I know, is the way you're going to make that interface, then that interface will become more and more solid and more and more accessible. and uh, you know, you'll, you'll learn more from it. So it'll turn into whatever it is you need it and want it to turn into. It will accommodate you. Uh, and you would say I should, my, should address more universals, uh, uh, as a more the entity and not the aircraft, as not namaste, but the air, but the universe. No. no, no, I don't say that. I say that when you have a, a fundamental issue, Mm -hmm. You should probably address Universus because he's kind of the basic source where mm -hmm. you're just going out to exploring and learning and experiencing. Just go get in your airplane. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, that's your that's your metaphor there. So it's it's not that you should uh, neglect one for the other. In either mm -hmm. case, both have a different function. Universus function is is like the mentor that will give you uh, advice, help set you up, uh, maybe help with understanding. And the airplane is your um, way of going and having experiences. And you need to have both. You can't, you can't not have the experiences and just talk to universes. And you can't just talk to universes and not have the experiences. 
both of those are part of your growing. You have to, you, those have to work together. So you, you do both of those and you'll have a need. You're, when you do your experiences and you're not quite sure what, where the learning was or what you were to learn from it or what was the point or something, and you're kind of confused by it, then it would be a good time to go talk to universes. You say, but you want to have the experiences first. You just don't want to call up universes and, you know, and chit chat. That's not, uh, you know, that's not what the, that link is for. That link is for your fundamental issues that uh, you need a you need a mentor to help you understand. Whereas the other is your ability to go out and experience, just gain experience in the larger in the larger system. So let that take you wherever it'll take you, and don't have the the thing you have to 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 be most careful about is not to have any expectations from either one. If you have expectations of either one. If in your mind, oh, Universus is going to explain these kinds of things to me, you know, that's an expectation. Or that, uh, you know, this airplane is going to do these sorts of things, and that's an expectation. Just let them do and be whatever they, you know, let the airplane take you wherever it does or where you want to go. If you've got a particular place and thing you'd like to explore, you can tell the airplane, the airplane will probably accommodate you or it'll take you where it thinks you need to go, whichever one, you can do both of those. But uh, let it unfold how it does on its own. Don't try to lead it in a particular direction. It doesn't mean you can't have an intent or a want to do or see or, or be connected to a certain thing. You can. You just don't, uh, don't have the expectations of where this is going to take you, what it's going to do, what you're going to learn out of it. Just go with it. Be open to wherever it takes you. Try to find the learning in whatever your experience is, mm -hmm. you see? So it's, it's that kind of an attitude that you need, to, you need to have. So you don't want to control it. You just want to mm -hmm. learn from it. Yes. Mm -hmm. use, it as a, use it as a resource. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, sometimes when people have these connections, then they start acting in the role of manager and universes and the airplane are in the role of servants almost, you know, and, and uh, they want to manage it mm -hmm. and don't manage it. Let it happen. And if you let it happen, you'll find that almost all of your experiences will have something that you can learn from it. And a lot of the times it won't be anything that you would have expected or nothing that you would have you know, asked for. But once you get it, you realize it was just perfect. It's just what you needed. Even though when you when it first happens, it's like, well, what was that? You know, what does that mean? And typically you will find what the meaning is for you. In it. Yes, I mean, you know, this dream alone, you know, my horizon was this, and after the dream it was this, just by this dream. So if it goes on like that, I <laughs> I'm going to explode. I think <laughs> <laughs> it probably will if you let it, and and like I say, have no expectations, and just let it go where it takes you. It'll probably keep going. You see, because in that mode, you're in the receive mode. You're in the open, you know, the open-minded mode. Now, the stuff that you get, you know, you need to be skeptical in the sense that. What, where is the meaning? You know, what is the significance of this? And you need to, you need to have a skeptical side, but the skeptical side shouldn't be running things. It should just be trying to understand mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. So these things are only going to be useful to you as they help you grow. If they're just experiences that don't help you grow, well, then they're not too useful and you'll let them you know, you can let them go or you can say, well, we need to do something. Either I'm not getting it or, you know, you're not, you're not taking any places that's useful and it will maybe change. It can change. You know, the airplane may go away and turn into something else. You know, it may turn into a rocket ship or it may turn into a bus or it may just turn into a teleport center that you go into and say, beam me up, you know, mm -hmm. and it won't be an airplane anymore. It, it, it'll change. But the universes probably won't change much. Universes is probably pretty stable and will be there to help you get it and, and understand why, you know, the what and why 
of what you're experiencing. So yeah, it's a it's a fairly common setup for the larger consciousness system. And uh, the thing that's that's really joyful about it from your perspective is okay, you've got their attention and they're willing to work with you, you know? Yay. That's good. And uh, that's very good. So now just go with it and see where it yes. takes you. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I um, it's the first time for me, so I I I very I appreciate very much your advice because it it, it gives me some certainty. I think I'm not very fear based, but of course I'm I, I I'm lacking orientation, so this is was very, very useful for me. Good. Okay. Um we were talking about uh, Mike was talking about um group the collective kind of experience, collective group experience. Uh, we were talking about individual data streams and how we how they differ. Um, just things were turning around in my head when we had this whole discussion and when uh, Oliver's question came up about the Tourette syndrome and you suggested how it might be helped and how a group might be help might be helpful. I've found now some of you you Tom were just at Monroe Institute. Some of you have been there. I know um, you're all familiar with Tom's science of how intention heals and how to do that according to his way. I was just wondering if we could have a half hour segment that might that people could submit a certain uh, situation like Oliver's and we could concentrate on that in, within this fireside chat. I don't know what you think about that. So I've been to, I can tell you that group effects um, do enhance the experiences. It kind of multiplies. I think you've said that, Tom. And um, I, I've been to, past, say, Brian Weiss's past life workshops where things were ordinary experiences were magnified 10 times within a group and uh, there was a healing workshop in Paris the same thing uh, things that you ordinarily do this was 10 times more and uh, I'm sure all of you have some comments on that just tell me what you think of the idea of a small segment of this devoted to Tom's particular science way of approaching a group group healing kind of thing what what do you think i guess we can all unmute or something we don't have to be muted i don't know i mean uh you know i've kind of thought about the whole um thing about like responsibility like what, what are the is the extent and the parameters of our responsibility like once we reach like a certain level of understanding like what Mm -hmm. What is what is the system expecting of us? You know, and you know, I have a lot of creativity of things bubbling, and it's you know, it ranges all the way from you know, you see all the as I was speaking about the indoctrinations and all the unconscious, mechanical, habitual, destructive behavior that's going on in the world, and you know, mm -hmm. so it ranges all the way from screaming on top of the mountaintops, or just kind of coasting by and just doing my own thing and just trying to increase my own quality and, and whatever interacts with you. But I mean, it sounds like it's a good idea. I mean, any time that we can kind of get together and try to really pinpoint that focus on, on a specific, you know, mm -hmm. it could be something that we could do as like a group where, you know, we could take requests and really try to pinpoint that focus all at once and try to make like a difference in, you know, and something that as a, like an MBT kind of a group, you know, mentality where we try to help in certain ways because you know it's kind of difficult for people to understand what we, what we how we understand things or, pushing people to accept what, you know, what they just can't accept based on the level that they're at. You know, you can't mm -hmm. force people to, to be what they're not. But, I mean, if we can make a difference in some ways that are maybe more subtle, you know. It, well, within, uh, yeah, thanks, Mike. Uh, within uh, specific people like the incident you mentioned with Tourette's, I, I would want to keep it all scientific because that, that's where Tom's coming from. So there'd have to be sort of, um, we'd have to measure results. We'd have to 
have someone um, give a report on a before and after, make a measurement of, of what kind of results to see what effect there's been. So you, Tom, would be the one to set up a protocol for that. And I don't know, just we toss it around. Anybody else have any, any thoughts on it? Do, because this group here, the group that signs into this, is um, a pretty good start as to an effective way to proceed with a, an experiment like this, I think. So would you expect the people who are watching it to kind of be a multiplier effect for that? or, or Well, I'm wondering. Um, well, Tom, what is, you know, what is the extent of our responsibility? I mean, at, at, once you reach a certain level of understanding, I mean, you know, as far as pushing yourself out there, so to speak, you know, or just, you know, radiating as you as you just go along in your daily life and you're interacting with the people and you just try to just be like a beacon, so to speak. I mean, what is the extent of our responsibility? Well, that depends on that depends on what uh, choices you have and and uh, what you can do, what you feel comfortable doing. Uh, this is a this is a good subject to to mention because a lot of people have have a, a mistaken idea that once you get rid of the ego and the fear, that you kind of float above it all. You are uh, uh, detached from what's going on here. You're not really plugged in. And that's not correct. That's not the right way to look at it. As you let go of your fear and let go of your ego, you need to stay connected. You need to stay um uh, what's the word? Integrated, um, uh, engaged, I guess the words I'm looking for. You need to stay engaged mm -hmm. with the rest of the world. It's not that uh, that you kind of go off in a cave and cross your legs and, and uh, become, you know, one with the larger consciousness system. You need to get engaged with reality. Um, and you can do that in several ways. One, like you say, just by your own good example, you know, by your own... Uh, uh, by your own fearlessness, by your own caring and, and loving and that sort of stuff, that good example will affect the people around you. Um, just in the, in the Jungian sense that you're connected with everybody else and you start to add that to the, to the mix of all the people you interact with. So that's one, you know, that's one way to do it. And that's a very powerful way. If you see other ways that you can do it, if you need, if you can talk to people, if you can come and become a member of the fireside chat, you see, that's another way to spread this understanding. What we're doing right now is another way of doing that, where we, we bring up problems and issues and ways of looking at it. And, and I don't know what the statistics are on fireside chat, but I suspect in a few months, we got tens of thousands of people who are listening to what we say here and it helps them i look at the, the the comments and a lot of the comments for fireside chat well all the comments from fireside chat tend to be very positive well i got a lot from that you know that really was a good one you know we we thanks guys you know that's just what i needed you know i hear that sort of thing coming from the people who get this so we're finding a way to do more than just be good examples. You know, we're finding a way to put information out there that helps tens of thousands of people. And, in, and as the years go by, it'll be hundreds of thousands and then millions of people, because as this stuff stays up on YouTube, there's a constant stream of people who are stumbling on it for the very first time, you know, and uh, it's, it's helpful. So those kinds of things are being engaged that we're doing. Now, Donna, has always had a proclivity for healing and she's been members of various healing groups and that's something that appeals very much to Donna is to use her intent to to heal and help others okay that's a that's a just the way Donna's put together and she would like to use this forum then to put these ideas out I think Oliver what you were saying is exactly what she had in mind and that is that, okay, 10,000 people are going to see this. If we could get all 10,000 of them or even half of that, maybe 5,000 of them to focus their intent for, you know, 
10 minutes or you know, 10 seconds or whatever they are willing to give us on a particular person, say somebody who has Tourette syndrome that might need a little help from 10,000 people, that that would perhaps be a, a very significant contribution. And uh, indeed, it's got two, two points about it that are, that are valuable. And one of them is that just by people being willing to do it is helpful to them and to the, and to the target person. And second, whenever people get involved in something personally that they do, they tend to get pulled into that more. It becomes a, a, a piece of their life rather than something that just strings by through their intellect one day. So it does kind of help people get, you know, get involved in it. So it's got those things. On the other hand, there are a lot of people who watch this and are seeing it many for the first time, and they are able to watch this and get something out of it just because it is very uh, intellectually based. This is about information. It's a uh, you know it, it's an information of how the world works. Various questions and problems are presented and. And we all talk about them. I talk about them probably more than anybody else, but we talk about them and we try to get perspective on it and see a more productive way of looking at it. And that's helpful to people. And if you introduce um, healing, it becomes a little woo-woo-ish and they're not so sure they want to get involved in this kind of woo-woo crazy stuff. And it kind of can come across as a, as a downer or a negative for people. So it's got both of these things. It can help pull people into a positive contribution. It can put people off because it's outside of their reality and it's outside of their comfort zone. Uh, uh, they can listen to it if it's just intellectual information and consider it, but if it starts to get too strange, then they have to distance themselves from it because it starts triggering fears. So these are all things that you'd have to, we'd have to consider as to how we interact with the larger audience. And where do we go? And uh, how many people do we help if we go this way? And how many people do we push away if we go that way? So it's a difficult thing to really decide uh, what to do. Donna is a healer. And Donna can see the potential for tens of thousands of people to now be pulled into this healing purpose and contribute in that way. And indeed, it could do that but we have to look at all sides of it and decide what it is that we are about, what we're doing, where we should go. And as Mike says, you know, how can we help? What can we do to make the, hmm. the maximum contribution? Should we uh, go out and, and start preaching on the street, you know, or should we, should we just, uh, you know, stay in our own environment and be a good example? You know, what is it that we should do? And I think everybody will have a different answer to that. And I think they should. I think it's just an individual thing. You do what you feel comfortable in doing. What opportunities come by you to do? So if you have an opportunity to go talk to a bunch of people because they understand that you are you know, interested in this sort of thing and they're interested in getting more information, well, then go talk to them, you know, be a, be a speaker. Go out and, and uh, contribute that. If nobody asks you that and there's nobody that knows that you know any of this stuff, well, then be a good example. You know, be whatever comes to you to be, and it'll change in time. If you become willing to do more, circumstances, synchronicity, if you like, will deliver more for you to do. So I think you're just open to it. And when you wonder about what should I do, you know, what should we be doing? How should we get engaged? Um, well, Look at the opportunities in front of you. And if there's none there, there probably will be some shortly that will help you uh, engage. You know, Justin engages with people through art. You know, they look at his art and it, it uh, helps them uh, maybe see things that are from a different perspective than they did before. Maybe it pulls things together for them in ways that they hadn't had it pulled together for them before. You know, that's another way of interacting with people. Um, you can interact with people in all sorts of formats in all sorts of ways and everybody has their own gifts and their own ways of maximizing it may be just talking to your friends or it may be something else but it's a it's kind of a personal thing 
It's not that we all should go off and do something together. Is that each person, I think, should go out and, and fulfill those opportunities and those things, those choices that they have. And if if you think doing something with other people is good, then get together. You can have bunches of people getting together to do things. There are like people who gather together like every week on, you know, they gather together and have what's called a healing circle where they get the, you know, clients, if you will, that need help. And they, they, uh, these people who are effective at healing will get together and put their collective healing energy on that problem. And there's probably thousands of these healing circles or whatever they're called, uh, you know, out there in the world, you can join one of those. And then every, you know, second Tuesday, you can go, you know, sit down with that group and, and focus on particular cases. There's lots I know of things. There's one on do. your forum, Tom. There's a yeah. kind of the SWAT, SWAT team on your forum um, sure. that that can do, but I just uh, I remembered the um, the conference with Hillary, Marla, and Lori. They're they're all grateful for your scientific connection to the work that they do. And I was thinking, you know, we should lend um, some scientific credibility to the healing too. But it just uh, whether it's it should be here or not, I don't know. Maybe we could create another conference call and have. People yeah, get together for that to, uh, purpose. You can create a healing thing. circle on a conference call. You could have yeah. a bunch of people that come together on a conference call, mm. and uh, and that's how they meet. You know, like the even the one in the in the forum. You know, maybe they could meet in this kind of a thing and do it regularly. Uh, would maybe let it make some organization to it. And if you wanted then to make it something that other people could follow from a scientific viewpoint, then you would want to have a measurement before and after and show effects and that kind of thing. But if all you were trying to do is just help people, then you really wouldn't care whether you, you know, showed those effects or not. You're just trying to help people. And uh, so it depends on what you want to accomplish as to how you would go about it. What's the, what are the fundamental things you want to do? If you want to bring in new people to thinking, Wow, this actually does work because I, you know, I participated in it and I put my effort there. And look, this person got a lot better. You see, well, that would be a very positive way for some people to, uh, you know, get into experiencing the larger reality, participating in it, and see what the effect is. So that would be a nice thing to do. But one group of people like ourselves aren't going to do all of these things. We need to pick out what's our forte and what are we, you know, what are we doing, and then we need to do that. And other groups should form to, you know, do other things. I think if we try to do everything, we probably won't do anything very well. We'll be spread too, too thin. So, good, good points, Don. Find, I think uh, we should consider. Yeah, I mean, if we can find ways to inspire, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be like a healing thing. If we can find ways to, we can inspire people through you know, the understanding of, of MBT where we can, I mean, because there's a lot of people out there that are just hurting and they don't even realize that they're hurting because they're just so lost in this, you know, whirling mass of, of uh, unconsciousness, so to speak. So if there's something maybe we can do to, that inspires people that doesn't kind of push them up, like Tom said, about, you know, this is kind of too sp spooky stuff and they're all trying to heal people. I mean, that could be a good thing as well, but maybe some form of activity or, things that we could do that could inspire people to see, you know, just positive good things, you know, something that's an inspiration to reach people that are hurting, that could maybe lift them up to a level that they couldn't have been otherwise, something like that. Yeah. I don't know if I'm getting see, it. The, yeah, the first thing you need to do, though, is to get them to realize that they are hurting and that there's something they can do about it. It's not, uh, it's not getting all the rest of the people and situations in their life to straighten out, but they can do about it by changing themselves. You see, that's uh, not necessarily an easy thing to convince somebody of because they're already convinced that their life would be perfect if just everybody else would behave and do what they want. You know, then that would, <laughs> they would be happy. They don't necessarily see it as an inside problem. They see it as an exterior problem. They're unhappy because of the way the world is, because of the way their children are, the way their spouses are the way their neighbors, their boss, you know, it's everybody else in their life is what creates all their drama and all their stress. And to realize that it's them is a big step to take. And that's, 
very admirable if you can do that. So, you know, the one thing I'd say is that the one, the world is now more accessible and to find people who, who will work with you and listen to you is easier now than it's ever been before. Go start a web, a website someplace and do whatever it is you, you know, there's a thing that eventually, even though you're talking to yourself for the first week, eventually then there's two or three others and pretty soon there's 20,000 people because you offer something you know, valuable to them. Maybe as simple as that. that. Yeah. I mean, like the yeah. Justin's art, you know, I mean, just, it, and art doesn't necessarily have to just be, you know, I mean, his drawings are brilliant and everything, but it just, uh, art can be, you know, creativity in many different ways. And that's really the only way probably to reach people is through some kind of creative art expression to, you know, like you said, starting with one person or five people. And then, you know, if it's meant to be yeah. and, it, and help, that's the only way to inspire people is through different forms of art, whether it's drawing, speaking, writing, you know, healing, you know, these types of things. But exactly. they should probably try to focus in, in those areas and find yeah. different areas. Websites only cost you you know, fifteen dollars a year. You know, there it's uh, not a cost. It's a it's a time issue, and uh, so that's you know, it's individual. Every individual, if they say, "I want to get engaged," "I want to be more helpful," then find a way. Be creative. Find a way to 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 help. But right now, it's some you know, it's wide open. It used to be the only people you could help would be your neighbors. You know, the people at work, the people you bumped into. But you're connected to the globe now. Mm -hmm. And uh, fortunately, YouTube, almost everything. everybody else in the world studies English in school. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's really because English is your native language. It's not such a big uh, drawback as it might have been 50 years ago. 50 years ago, only the people who grew up in English speaking countries would, would be able to listen to you. But now there are people all over this world who understand English enough that uh, they can understand what you're saying. So you can have a, a pretty major effect in the world just by putting something out there that people look at and immediately say, ah, I can get something from this. You know, this speaks to me. Um, you can go do it. I mean, that's what Oliver did. Oliver started this whole fireside chat. He, he's decided, <laughs> well, you know, we can, we could all maybe get together and you know have this conversation that a lot of people would learn from. And uh, he talked to me about it, and I said, "Yeah, good idea." And you know, and we got Donna in, and then we got Justin came in, and now all the rest of you are here. And you know, this is kind of Oliver's uh, contribution. He found ways to, you know, he found the software and the hardware, and we got Justin to do the video editing. And see, people have come up and volunteered and and are putting out effort. And we reach tens of thousands of people with these discussions. So that's good. But that's just something that Oliver was his idea. He got it going. And then Justin took a load off of him for doing the, the video uh, editing. And then, uh, now here we've got a thing. And lots of people look forward. When is the next one coming out? You know, uh, they look forward to this discussion. So we're doing it. You know, this is one one solution, but like we said, there's a hundred there's hundred other ways that you can do it. It doesn't have to be just what we're doing, but this is one of them. And we're doing it and we're pretty successful with it. And everybody that comes on here and talks is a contributor to it. You know, there'll be a there'll be a thousand people who heard what Ingeborg said and they'll go, Oh yeah. I had that happen to me, you know, and I did this and that, and may, I, I had too many expectations, though, and, you know, it didn't work out. I'm going to get back into that. There'll be a thousand people who will learn something just from, you know, the conversations that we, you know, that we had here, and it's the same with the rest of you, the things you bring up. That's what makes it. It's not me sitting here, you know, not the talking head blabbing on about the theory. It's about all the interesting questions and the way these questions take the theory and force it to some practical application you see that's what's really interesting it uh, that's what makes it unique so that's what we do so mike you're now a part of it and you asked a lot of interesting stuff here in the beginning and we talked about that and there'll be you know five thousand people eventually that that'll just resonate with them they'll get that and they'll say yeah that's just what i needed to hear 
So uh, you are contributing in a way. You are spending time that's making a difference. And that's what we're doing here. But that doesn't mean this is the only way to do it. You see, there's lots of other things that people can do. So whatever comes to you to be a part of and to connect with, and just go do it. There was some part of you, Mike, that thought you wanted to join this. You wanted to participate. So you did. You found out how to do it. You got got an invite. You got invited. Here you are. You're asking questions. You're making a difference. So it's that's what we do and that's why we all come here because it does make a difference i don't know if you guys get the comments look through the comments after these things go up but uh, you'll see they're mostly very positive people really appreciate that we take the time and trouble to create these discussions about practical issues that they have and uh, it's very meaningful to lots of lots of folks and when they say wow that was great just what i wanted to hear it doesn't mean the whole thing was just what they wanted to hear. It was somebody asked a question that was particularly relevant to them, and that's what they wanted to hear. And who knows what that question is? Because somebody else said it was really great, but it was a totally different question on a totally different subject. So that's the, 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 the thing here that makes it work are all the good questions. That's the key thing, to get people to ask questions, because many people will have similar questions and similar things that happened to them and similar experiences and you can talk about your experiences as Ingeborg does and so on and a lot of people will be able to relate to that and it'll mean something to them that she's come here and brings this one thing out and if she didn't come here this one thing would never be brought out so it I think we're doing 100 right. people 100 people yeah. could have realized you know see what her experience and felt they can relate to it and, and it could sure. open them up completely instead of hiding in the corner being worried and fearful about it it's a very inspirational exactly. thing exactly so i think oliver had a great idea and we're all taking part in it and uh it's working yeah it's thanks working. again oliver <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. and justin uh, well, and, I'm in the and justin yeah <laughs> You guys do oh, the most of the work. So it's good. And uh, but that doesn't mean it's limited to this. There's other things you can do. You know, this is just a few, you know, a few hours of your time, you know, once a month on the on the on the first Sunday. And it's it uh, there's you've got all the rest of the month. There's other things you might want to be doing too. It just depends on the time you have and the inclination you have and what you'd like to get started. And you might start something else, or you may just be a good example because that's powerful as well too. And maybe our listeners, you know, if we're going to broadcast all of this, uh, you know, self uh, uh, thinking about what it is we're doing and what could be done, maybe some of them will have some bright ideas too about their needs and the things that they would like to see. You know, maybe some of that will come in. Um, so there is opportunities to do many things. And yes, we do have some leverage now because we have 10,000 people who will listen to it. If you can get 10,000 people to try to heal somebody that has Tourette's syndrome, that may be a powerful tool. And uh, so we got lots of things that we can be and become and do. We just need to keep a focus, I guess, so that uh, we keep those 10,000 people interested and it doesn't, it doesn't dwindle. We need to be of value of service to people. That's how that's how it spreads. Well thank you, so, Tom. Yeah, so I don't know if I helped any Donna, but it's just you know Yeah, we'll talk. We'll, yeah. We'll we'll see what comes of this. Thanks so much. Yeah. Everyone. Maybe we could even get more people more people involved to where we have uh, you know I think Oliver said we could we could carry uh, you know 10, 15 people. This is great to have a heated debate or something. We can have like a yeah. really engaged in multiple conversations. It could be different. It could be different types of, you know, forums. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't always have to be, although it's great listening to Tom, just, I could just sit here and just meditate and just listen to Tom for hours. But, <laughs> you know, uh, it can be great if, you know, depending on how many people are on here, you can have very multi, uh, you know, sure. multi angle discussions between people. Yeah. 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 It can go lots of different places, but it'll it'll tend to go where it where it goes, and our audience actually should have a big input on on uh, you know where we go. I mean, what we're trying to do is be of service. We're trying to prevent, uh, not prevent. We're trying to create stuff information that people can use, 
and by sharing our experiences and our questions, we're doing we're doing that. But if our listeners can think of other things, then uh, we can do lots of different things here. It's just a forum to produce information. That's true. Whether it's healing, whether it's food, whether it's uh, you know anything, it could be any any kind of uh, helpful topics to to help people right. and all kind of yeah. put up. I'm thinking sense. having having uh, ten people here in, instead of uh, what do we have six? You know that might throw in a different. You know, you create a different kind of energy with ten people than you create with six people, and with fifteen people, then it would even be a different kind of energy would be created. So it'll just kind of become what it becomes. I, I run into people that have questions on after they listen to one of these. They say, "How how do you get to participate in this?" And I always say, "Go talk to Oliver. Go talk to Donna. Go talk to Justin." Says all these people are are the people who who run it, and contact them, and they'll help you. You know figure out how to how to show up on it. And um, I've told that probably to a dozen people, but I don't know that many of them actually do it. But, uh, and we've well, got we've it quite a few forum. people on the list. I think we have about 25 people who could join, but mm -hmm. uh, we only Maybe have- Maybe we can have like uh, themed, you know, uh, like a themed kind of sessions at times, instead of open to a whole bunch of questions, we can have like a theme one or two topics and try to in, in, in invite more people in where we can have an engaged discussion about one specific issue, it, like a very uh, dynamic issue that we can go back and forth on yeah. as opposed to a bunch yeah. of different little ones maybe. Yeah. I'm open to any of it. I'm open to any of it. So, um, you know, you guys lead and I'll follow. <laughs> Sounds all good. Right. Well, thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, Thank now you we guys all, for have, have used all of our time, haven't we? We've just about we're coming up on four o'clock, or at least in yeah. my time, we're, we're coming up on the thirty, the three hour mark. Yeah, and uh, we've just about con consumed it. So, <laughs> do you guys think that this uh, that our discussion here should be part of what goes out, or is this uh, among I us? Or this, this yeah, sure. The, yeah, I think we should have it as a part three. I mean, Justin, you can mark it like internal discussion and I think also Ingeborg's, yeah. uh, I th the Ingeborg part should also be in it because uh, that answer, I personally find that very interesting what Tom had to say about her experience. Yeah. I think well, it'll yeah, be it'll show a lot of in this. I mean, it, the fact that we're looking to engage more things and, and invite more people in so it's not like a little clicky kind of thing so they know that we're looking to expand it, to make it different, to, you know, have more engaging yeah. and it, it'll probably be a good thing for people to hear. Mm. Sure. Great. I agree. Okay. Mm -hmm. If only we could offer free food, we'd get a bunch of people to come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Free food always does the trick, doesn't it? <laughs>